Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, we've got some seriously insane stuff to go over. So recently a Jurassic Outpost article came out on a very secretive animated series that was supposed to coincide with the release of The Lost World. And wow, talk about some wild ideas that they had for this thing. Before we go any further, we need to go over the facts. Back during the development for the Lost World Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg actually commissioned the creation of a new animated series himself, which was going to be created by DreamWorks. Now, in the article from Jurassic Outpost, they go over some of the exclusive artwork that artist Philip J. Felix actually created for the project. He was also a part of the story crafting process that would have gone into the animated series had it ever gotten off of the ground. And to say that this show would have taken Jurassic into a wildly different direction than what we saw in the Lost World film is an absolute understatement. Concept art for the series features a lot of stuff that you would associate with the second JP movie. Wild velociraptors hunting in packs, dilapidated looking buildings similar to the worker village that we saw for like six minutes in the movie, and a T-Rex chasing some guy down somewhere on the island. Sounds like some pretty standard Lost World stuff, right? Well, that's not the only thing the show would have to offer. This animated series would have introduced some absolutely insane creations in its story that were way beyond any hybrid dinosaur that has ever popped up in the franchise since. Apparently, one of the show's primary antagonists would have been something called the Doomsday Rex, which was drawn as a two-headed tyrannosaur with four arms. Another beast that may or may not be related happened to be something that looks like a giant mutant slug creature with three T-Rex heads. Humans would climb into specialized mech suits in order to fight the dinosaurs and stop any sort of terrible things happening to them in this spinoff from the second movie. What we're seeing here is essentially a science fiction story that would have involved dinosaurs similarly to what we'd seen in The Lost World, but it would also have been coupled with some more bizarre and kind of fantastical stuff compared to what that film had to offer. You know, you'd get your Tyrannosaurus going berserk and attacking people, along with some modern human equipment getting trashed by prehistoric animals, but you'd also get some new outlandish genetic creations that were never meant to exist on planet Earth in the first place. The goal for the show was going to be a prime time animated series with new episodes coming out weekly and the focus was going to be on hybrid dinosaurs and genetic manipulation. I gotta tell you, when Chris Pugh mentioned this thing in his Twitch livestream earlier this week, I had no idea what to expect because I'd never heard of this stuff before and the mention of a three-headed T-Rex caught my attention like super quick. And now that I've seen some of the artwork that was being commissioned by Spielberg from Philip J. Felix to do, I gotta say the images do not disappoint. Okay, so now that I've gotten all of that out of the way, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking that this is some pretty outlandish stuff and it would have never flown back in the 90s. But believe it or not, this wouldn't have been the first time Hyper Dinos had popped up in the franchise in the past. Back in 94, there actually existed a JP comic book run that was titled Return to Jurassic Park. Now, the story was canned after the writers got wind of Lost World getting made, so they decided to toss the green flame arc they were currently writing. I still want to know what the hell that was. And they went on to create the very first hybrid dinosaur story in JP history. Now, this comic book featured some way more believable hybrids than what the Lost World show would have offered up. And you know, in the books, it was just pygmy-sized crossbreeds and nothing looked Looked remotely like a three-headed T-Rex mutant slug monster that we would have seen on TV. That being said, after they decided not to go ahead with the Lost World's animated series, they actually did begin development on Jurassic Park Chaos Effect, the famous toy line that featured hybrids, which was also supposed to get its own TV series. Now look, I'm sure a lot of you are looking at this concept art and you're thinking about these ideas like it's just the furthest thing from the franchise that could possibly ever happen. But I'm actually going to play devil's advocate here and try to get you all to understand something that I've been going on about for a while now. Think back to the 1990s when you were just a little kid and watching Jurassic Park for the first time. If you weren't around back then, well then just pretend like the only thing that existed in the world was the first movie. Well, what was that story about? Well, there was this old billionaire guy, he found a way to drill into amber and extract DNA from dinosaurs, but then he had to hybridize the DNA with genetic material from frogs, and that's what led to cloning extinct animals, and then those animals eventually became hermaphroditic and changed their sexes from female to male, and then they started breeding. This is a science fiction story. 
True, it's got dinosaurs, but the story is rooted in the science fiction genre. But you know what isn't rooted in the science fiction genre? The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3. They don't talk about that stuff at all in those. And that's when the series became solely dedicated to real life dinosaurs. And Lost World even took on a more grounded approach than the first movie, as it was basically animals in a wildlife preserve. That's what was so different about that film and what gave it such a unique voice when you compared it to the first movie. And that's also why I think so many people harp on how Jurassic is only about real purebred dinosaurs and nothing more. Not because that's what the first movie was about, but because that's what the second and third films focused on. But now, if all you had to go by was the first movie, there was no Lost World, there was no JP3, and you were asked to develop a story for a Jurassic Park TV show, I'm sure you can understand why they thought about some of this stuff when they were developing it. I'm not saying it would have been outstanding and what the series needed, but I can totally see what headspace they would have been in after just JP1. So while I do find these designs and concepts to be outlandish and downright insane in some places, I think you need to acknowledge the time when this was being created. Had this have come out, I'm sure it would have been adored by some fans, and others wouldn't have embraced it so openly, but when all you have to go by is the first film, yeah, I totally see where they were coming from when they were trying to make this. That being said, the series has evolved dramatically since this was in development, and while we do have hybrid dinosaurs in the new films, animals like the Indominus Rex and the Indoraptor are far more naturalistic than anything like what we're seeing in this cancelled animated series that was supposed to tie into the Lost World. With that being said, I want to pass the conversation on to all of you guys and ask you all what you personally think about this stuff and what do you think would have been your reaction back in the day if you were 5 years old or 10 years old or even a teenager or adult when they were making this mutant dino animated series for Lost World? And after you answer that question, for those of us who remember this kind of thing, what was your reaction to Jurassic Park Chaos Effect back in the late 90s? What did you think about that stuff back then? I'm asking because these two properties are pretty similar, and one even kind of bled over into the other. I know mutant T-Rex slugs is like very different, but it's still cut from the same cloth. Now, whatever your own thoughts and opinions may be, I'd love to hear all of them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. It really means the world to me that all of you continue to watch my videos, and I never want any of you to forget that. Now, I'd like to thank all of you for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. See you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.